Hello, everybody. Today is episode number 42. I'm going to try and work on some variable speed for the spinning of cubes. So, uh, before I do that, I think I had an idea to extract the black and walls function into its own component. Just because that would allow us to expose this color and it's going to make it really easy for us to to set things up. That might also sort of help our issue with the um, moving this to a better place. So let's give that a shot first. Strange. Um, what is this unreachable code detected? Oh. I guess check for overlap with node on same cube. I guess we're not using this anymore. <clears throat> so what can I put that in? Um, cube. We could call this cube face tinter, cube face color. Just cube face tint. I like that. And we'll have a public member function called public boy tint faces. Tint wall paths. <clears throat> and we'll have a color. I mean, I could just put the code into Yeah, let's just put it in there. <clears throat> okay, so base container, this transform fine, so this will go on the cube. <clears throat> and let's also do an assert here. Oh, control home. Assert r equal. No. Wall renderers. No. Um, six. Base container dot child count. <clears throat> um, a cube has been found with less or more than six faces. Always good to program defensively. So we've got our tint wall paths. Um, it was in our limited spin, so we don't need to call this black and walls function anymore. <clears throat> Ooh. Let's serialize this field. And in here, we'll just say black tint dot tint wall paths. Whoa. Hey. Uh, by exposing this as a variable, that means I can have multiple cube face tints. Uh, 
Oh, geez. Um... <clears throat> Well, let's just put it on here. <clears throat> and I had like, I like the point one. What? What? Ah, uh, fine, 25. Ugh. What's up with Unity's tab? What is going on? That's terrible. Let's see if this works. <clears throat> Boom, one, two, three. Excellent. So we've extracted that into its own component. <clears throat> Variable speed. And you know what I'm going to do in my prefabs? That's special cubes. Cube begin is special. And this is cube limited spin. So if I drop another guy in here. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So let's duplicate this bad boy. Slide him over and let's rename him to cube. We'll just do a slow spin at first. And on the cube tint face, let's have a Boolean. Oh, see, that's going to be a problem. Um, let's try this. We'll say if change on start. So what's a slow color? <clears throat> I'll just pick this for now. I'm not a color specialist. Yeah, transform child out of bounds. No, what? Oh, <laughs> well, first of all, I'm totally not using this color that we made. Transform child out of bounds. So let's do this start and then cube face spawner. There's the spawn function, set up cubes. Okay, so start does not do anything there. Do a shift F12 and see who sets up the cubes. Cube manager, that is in start, aha.
I guess we could use, I don't really use this very often. In fact, I use it so rarely. Project settings, script execution order. Can execute before or after the default time and are executed from top to bottom. All other scripts execute at the default time in the order they are loaded. So I want my cube face tint and my cube manager. How about that? Hey! <laughs> Solving problems. Oh, see, that's the other problem. I'm not able to change the tint after the first um, tint change. Starting to look a lot more colorful. I like that. But if I want two tints, I'm going to need to do something a little bit different. Is this going to break things? I think I have a check somewhere. Game object test. I think this might give me a... Oh, really? Oh, that's not what I want. Um, so let's call this slow spin tint. Oh! <laughs> ah, okay, okay. So if Hmm, no. Hmm. Well, let's just do it this way. Cube face tint. And these are all twenty five. So, no, I did this wrong. This should be in here. Because this still has my limited spin. No spins remaining tint. So this would change it at first. <clears throat> and then after three spins, it should go to gray. Forty-six. No reference exception. This transform find face container. That's why. Okay, so we're going to need to link the container. instead of finding it. It's not too awful. Uh, let's go to our limited spin. Face container. There we go. Let's apply that. And then cube slow spin. Yeah, that should work. Ah, that's why this one needed a assignment. Cool.
dead end. That's something we could work on. Uh, let's get the slow spin working first. Um, <laughs> well, you know what? Currently, cube rotator, easer, duration, two, right? Not going to do any prefab stuff with that yet. Not too tricky. Um, <clears throat> but I kind of liked this idea with my wide printing this idea here but I feel like each of these so we have a linear and we have a curve and then we've got this crenellation slow fast slow Fast. So let's say that the light blue is slow, right? Um, limited spin. So in the cube scripts, special cubes. Let's do a variable speed. I forgot to name my project here. What's going on? Are you open? Okay, you are open. You are open. So with my variable speed, <clears throat> I was thinking about using an animation curve. But I wanted I, the curve isn't really a good idea. Maybe what we could do is have categories of speeds. So like very slow, slow, normal, fast, super fast. Five categories seems like enough. <clears throat> Let's let's do some commenting, right? And we could make these cooler names, so like Instant and Glacial. Although if this is a kid's game, we'll just stick with Super. Now how would we define these? I want them to be uniform across the game. So let's do this trick. Um, I learned this trick a while ago, and I was not too happy about it. <laughs> it seems pretty hacky. Variable speed statics. But this is what we're going to do. Um, we're going to make a whole bunch of private member variables. We'll say super slow is five seconds. 
slow speed is three. Ooh. Ooh, even better, even better. Um, variable speed statics. I'm kind of deciding whether or not I want this to be inside of the class. Having it inside of the class will protect it in terms of scope and namespace from naming collisions. And I'm actually variable speed statics. Dun, dun. Yeah, we'll put it in the class. And so this is going to have a public float speed and a public color tint. <clears throat> and we're going to need to make this system serializable so that Unity's inspector can parse it. Oh, hey. And I wonder, I've never tried this before. Private, oh, hey, private stat array stats equals new stat five. This won't work, will it? Whoa, really? And that should lock it down to five, right? Uh, I believe this could go in core level objects. Let's put it in its own container called statics. And also, this is a neat little trick, public string name, and in awake, let's fill out these names. Uh, I guess we should have an enum as well, right? <laughs> Stats at speed type dot super slow dot name and I know I could just use a loop and two string. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. Oh, in fact. Let's do it this way. Stats equals new stat integer speed type at type count. Classic for loop. And then stats at stat index. Oh, on this this is on awake. If I'm doing new, that means I'm going to be overwriting the old data. That is not what I want to do. OK, 
Can I do an inline initialization here? In a variable, try using a new expression instead. Cool. And then in here, There we go. So now we have a constructor. We're initializing this inline. So it should. I don't know. I'm not sure if this is going to work as I want. Let's see. And then I should also be able to hide in inspector this name, right? So the name goes away. Yeah, there we go. So now our stats actually look correct. So all of this work, right? What are we gaining from it? This allows us to set these instance variables, and then once these are set, when the game starts, we'll change the static version of this, because in Unity, we're not allowed to see static variables in the inspector. Five seconds was a bit heavy. Um, well, you know, that's what testing is for. So slowness, um, let's do like a deep, a dark red for super slow, maybe a lighter red, and then sort of a white. And then like a Teal green. Teal has nothing to do with green. And a bright green. And apply. There we go. So now my statics have this variable speed. And then on awake. I can't do that, can I? Yeah, I thought so. Um, so let's comment this out and change this to exposed stats or maybe stats from inspector and then these can just be actual stats
do 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 and then stats at stat index is equal to stats from inspector and stat index. So on awake, now we should have access to these everywhere. So on my variable speed, let's just make this serialize a field and that is variable speed statics speed type and then in start oh geez The whole goal of this is to just be able to quickly change the speed at which cubes rotate through the inspector and let the wall coloring handle itself. Hmm. But if I do this in start, then it's going to be fighting against the cube face tint start. Let's just see what it looks like. I'm going to get rid of this limited spin. Oh. Hold on a moment. I'm just turn off change on start. Let's rename this to cube variable speed spin. I like that a little bit better. So variable speed on start, we're just going to change the color. Get component tint. And then tint dot color. Oh, hey, set color variable speed statics dot stats at integer cast speed dot color or tint. Now we just need to set color in tint, and we should be happy. Whoa, whoa. Set color and then tint dot tint. <laughs> Not the greatest naming. <laughs> uh, that's okay. That's is a small part. So that means super slow, this should tint red. Nope. Transform child out of bounds. Okay. So that's the exact same problem. <laughs> uh, you know what? I wonder if I could... Let's go back to that project settings, script execution order. Can I put this at negative 50? So this happens before the default time. Hey, nice. St 
still a little bit strange. No, I was afraid of that. <laughs> we lost all that data. You know what, let's not use this. Um, let's use a scriptable object. Scripts. Oh boy, it's been a while since I've done this. Um, So I'm going to rename this to variable speed data. I know, I know. Not happy. And this variable speed data. Ah, oh, sucks I did all this work. And name this well. So the idea is the scriptable object is sort of this database thing that lives in the project folder. And each one of these stats, variable speed data, as a stat. I don't think I care about the name anymore. Do I? Do I really? Let's keep it. Um, don't need this anymore. And so what I'm doing is I'm matching a speed type with some stat. The drawing board. I don't think this really needs to be, I don't think we're still going up here. So I've got my super slow. As you can tell, I fixed my Wacom tablet so that it's not taking up two screens. So much nicer. Um, so this has a color and a speed. Possibly a name. It's kind of a thick text. That's better. And we have an array of these things. And is this the identifier? I don't really want to make an entire custom. OK, so this is what I'll do. I'm going to make the name required, and we'll just do some error checking. So if somebody types in the wrong name, um, we'll just show an error and be like, hey, um, lightning is not a speed, right? And let's name this variable speed stat. Uh, 
And what is this called? Um, menu. Create asset menu. And the file name is going to equal cube spin variable speeds. And the menu name will be Whitlings. I don't care about the order. And then this is just going to have, oh. Let's have a speed type. And get rid of all of this work. No more static. Oh, hey, I need that speed type. What am I doing here? <laughs> So we just got an array of different speeds. We don't even need a unity message function because we need to inherit from scriptable object. Okay. Things that don't matter. Um, how many spaces are between my empty comment blocks? That does not matter whatsoever. Variable speed statics cannot be found. That is correct. We're going to leave this out for now. Variable speed data does not derive from mono behavior. Oh, wait, variable speed data. Oh, hey, we can get rid of this all together. I could have sworn that meant that a little Whitlings should pop up here. We hit asset menu. There we go, create Whitlings. Cube spin variable speeds. And you're going into scriptable objects. You should be out here. Oh, geez. Where did you get created? You got created in prefabs, didn't you? So here we'll have five speeds. Set up these colors again, yay. What was it? Make a light red. I don't know how much I like normal being this like bright white color. We'll definitely find something a little bit better.
And I don't need we don't believe we need this type count anymore. <clears throat> Let's dump that as well. So we got our things. So now our variable speed is going to need a reference to a private variable speed data. And then above that, just because it would read better, I believe, got a variable speed data dot speed type. And so here we'll do tint set color. And that color is going to be speed data at speed type as an integer dot color. Why don't you like that? Ah, speed data dot speeds. With an S there. Really? Tint got me again. Tint versus color. This is another thing I have to like stick with. I mean, I'm using tint everywhere. So that's what I'm going to use. No explosions. I like that. Speed data goes here. And now we have five of them. So super slow, slow, normal, fast, super fast. Hey. They're all spinning the same speed. <laughs> uh oh. How are we doing on time? We're getting close. Um, so we've got our cube rotator easer duration. That's the next step. Set ease duration. What did I call that? Variable speed stat. Let's just calculate that once. So that means my cube rotator needs a set ease duration function. Where's my public land? Public member functions. Wow, my easer doesn't have a set duration either? Private float duration. Okay.
Transform ease from cube rotator. And cube rotator from variable speed. Really? Cube rotator public. Did I say set ease rotation? What the heck? Buddy, what are you doing over there? So five seconds should be a long time. Set next was given a path node that has no tag. Oh dear. Let's throw a context into here. L path face clone node untagged node. What are you doing? What are you doing? L path face. Really? Let's go down here, huh? <clears throat> So the last time I saw that happen, I just needed to update my faces, right? Why does that happen? What goes on there? Oh no. Yes. <laughs> See, it's still doing it. <laughs> well, that's for tomorrow. Um, we got the variable speed in. It looks pretty good. Nothing too fancy. Still got some errors hiding out in here. But this is pretty nice. This makes it very easy to tune. We only have one place to go. The cubes just sort of take care of themselves. And of course, this tint function is probably going to be something like, hey, go find this prefab or get this pretty art to show the user that, oh, yeah, this is a special cube that turns super slowly. I'm just very sad that this is broken. Mm -mm 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 -mm. But that is a problem for tomorrow. So thank you, everybody, much. Thank you, everybody, much. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.